Hi guys, uh, we are working on a couple of curve tumblers today. Ink Week wouldn't be Ink Week without some fire tumblers, so that is what we are going to do. Uh, one of these is a 20 ounce curve, one is a 30 ounce curve, they are from Maker Flow Crafts, and they are just prepped and spray painted. These ones happen to be matte white, um, not the greatest spray paint job. I prepped these months ago when I was planning to do Ink Week back in March, so at that time spray painting was difficult, So, um, but they'll be fine, they'll cover, so I'm not terribly concerned about the terrible job. I am just getting resin on them right now. This is KS Resin Liquid Stone Ultra UV. I have several inks handy. I have Unicone Art, I believe this is Cherry Red. I have Tim Holtz Ember. I also have Tim Holtz Crimson. I have Orange from the Let's Resin sets. For yellows, I have Lemonade from Tim Holtz. Pinata Sun Bright Yellow. Dijon from Tim Holtz, which is kind of a yellowy green, and I may or may not add some slate. So I'm actually gonna start with my yellows. And when I do a fire tumbler, I like to mostly cover all of my white first before I even get to swirling. I'm just going to work through my colors and cover the cups. And you can see this is spreading pretty well on its own to begin with. I'm going to come back in with a couple drops of yellow. I'm working these on a double turner, so it's a little bit more challenging for me. I'm just going to put a couple drops of the slate on each, like very, very few. Okay. So now I'm going to get my heat gun out. Um, I use a Ferno 550 from Wagner. It's going to be pretty loud, so I'm going to mute this and fast forward it. I'm going to use it on a relatively low heat. This is the heat designation, and then I have the fan, so I'll put it on high fan. Okay, so I can tell you I'm going to like the smaller one better. Um, I just like the way it swirled and flowed a little bit better. 
that happens. It just, they do their own thing. So I'm going to put a little bit more color into the bigger one. And I'm going to try to carefully touch up a couple fish eyes that I see in the big one. Um, I don't see any in the small one, actually. So, oh, I do, I see one. And I will also at this point try and touch any really white spots. And I don't think I'm going to switch the direction of flow on the small one, but I do think I am going to reverse the spin on the large one here in a second. Because I really do like the way this looks. I like parts of this, but not all of it. So, but the parts I really like, I can avoid with the decals and the parts that I'm not as big a fan of, I can try and decal over a little bit, so. That'll just be the way that goes. So I'm just going to watch them come around one more time. I do have a little bit of fish eye action opening up. It's kind of normal for a cup like this to get fish eyes. Uh, you can probably actually see them better on the camera than I can with the bare eye. For whatever reason, the camera picks them up really well. I'll think they're good, and then I'll go look at the video, and I'm like, whoa. So. But they won't fill in on their own as the cup spins. So if you don't catch them... It's not the end of the world. Um, you'll catch them on the next coat. They'll fill in. So. They're both spinning away from me now. I want this one to spin towards me. And I do want to try and level it out a little bit more. So I'm going to let these sit and dry. They're going to dry overnight and we will come back to them tomorrow for hopefully decal. So I'll be back. Okay, it is time to get decals on these. Here's the small one. Looks fantastic. And the big one I actually do like in the end. So I'm just going to decal the big one on camera because, you know, so I am hoping that I can do it off the sheet without having to cut them all apart individually, but we'll see. Do the Maltese cross at the top. And I cut this one for the big curves at, um, 3.3 inches and for the small ones the 20 ounce curve I cut it at 3 inches and my little people for the big one I cut it 2.7 high and then for the small I cut them at 2.5 tall I got this set on Etsy a long time ago and the seller took it away but if you look on Creative Fabrica there's similar 
fire silhouettes is what you can find them listed as. So I would try there. Or firefighter silhouette or something. If I think of it, I will, and I can find it again, I will post the Creative Fabric link. I don't know why the Etsy seller did away with theirs. Um, and I no longer have the original file, so whatever the rest of the set was, I no longer even have access to because they were all stored on my old computer. And then the other side gets the two individual silhouettes, which these are the bigger ones. Okay. Okay, I am ready to get the epoxy on these. So, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and torch these quick. Um, they will get one more thin coat, exactly like I just did. Um, I will clean the rim up in between this coat and the next coat. Um, I do have a video up of how I clean my rims. If you look back, I use a flap wheel on my rotary tool for when I do rims. I will probably run that on these and then just wipe them down with alcohol on the inside to get any overspill of the paint out, or the ink, rather. So, but again, I do have video about the flap wheel and the rotary tool, so that's available, so I'm not going to show those steps. Um, but yeah, they'll just get one more identical coat. That was 30 ml split between these two cups. Probably a little more on this one than this one, maybe 17, 13. So by the end, these will have 90 between the two of them. So probably about 50 on this one and 40 on this one. I try and keep my coats thin so the cup stays a little bit lighter where possible. So that is it for these. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> 